Hello everyone, Gilly Asafsky here, back with our live. Okay, I'll introduce myself while we're waiting for people to join. I know many people uh, can't technically be here at 11 o'clock weekly, so you can always watch the replay later. If you're here live, just say hi. And if you're watching this as a replay, please write hashtag replay. Um, and we'll go from there. Hi, Denise. How are you? Okay, so I'm going to get started. First of all, I just want to say I am dedicating um, this live in honor of my dear deceased yoga teacher who passed away Sunday evening. Um, her name was Tina Shamak, and uh, Tina was such a huge part of my life. Uh, we did yoga several times a week together. We had conversations about the sun, the sky, the moon, the earth, spirituality, family, everything. And she was just such an amazing mom and an amazing friend. And I want to honor her memory as I come on here to support you guys in parenting. Okay. Um, that being said, so um, let me tell you a little bit about myself for new people who may be watching. I'm Gelly Asafsky. I'm a child and family therapist. I've been practicing now for 20 years. And I am also an EMDR consultant. So I do a lot of trauma work. And um, I am a registered play therapy supervisor. So not only do I work with people in my office, I actually train therapists as well nowadays, which is such a joy after all these years to be able to give back to the next generation. Yes, I know I look very young. Um, those are the genes. I did nothing to do that. <laughs> so um, I've got the years behind me. I've raised my daughters. I'm now a grandmother. So I've got a lot of life experience in addition to my work as a therapist. And that's what I bring to my work here. Okay. I also, before we get into this, I want to talk about my crazy Mother's Day pre-launch of my parenting course that's going online. So this course is going to be a six week course that you can do on your own time in a private Facebook page with a live Q&A weekly uh, where I'll be hanging out to support you parents in raising your children with play the non-tech way. So I've renamed my course for the online version as parenting with play the non-tech way. I like the way it had a, a cool ring to it. Now, these kind of courses are typically really expensive, but you know what, starting online, it's, you, you know, some of you may know me, some of you may know me through my Facebook group, um, through uh, my business page, just as a friend. And I understand that it's sort of like building the trust factor. I've got to get in there. I've got to get the testimonials. Thank you. I love those hearts. And so I decided to do a Mother's Day special and then Tina passed. So I did not get to like actually talk about it a lot. So here it is. The first offer, the 197, which is like insane, was taken. And um, my next two people who join the parenting class pre-launch will get the class, the course at 297. The next two people who join will get the class at 397. And then I'll be um, uh, pricing this at 497 for about a month because I'd like to get the testimonials. I'd like to get the results with people online. I have a smashing huge group of ladies who are doing my third parenting course, uh, telecourse, and uh, the feedback is amazing. So we're going to discuss us has been about connection. So that's the discussion we've been having today. And I wanted to just talk a little bit about connection with all of you. And what does connection really mean as a mom? Um, my whole thing in my course and in my life and in my work with the children and families that come to me privately is about helping children, helping families build resilience. Because in the crazy world that we live in, if COVID hasn't taught us anything, uh, one thing it did 
teach us that the world can go upside down in the flash of a minute of a day and um, all systems that we count on for our kids, for our families, for us to function in a disaster, don't function. And what is the thing that carries families through? It's resilience. It's when moms and children feel connected on a heart level, on a soul level, and the, the children can lean in to the parents, to moms. My focus is on moms, right? And to be supported and loved and nurtured. And so if I flip it around, what do parents really need um, to carry these, you know, to, to have these big shoulders for challenges in life? Because I've had my own personal challenges, trust me, no one's immune, not even me. So, you know, the, the, the myth is that a therapist, well, they, you know, they have the training, so their lives, you know, are perfect. Well, there's no such thing as a perfect life. We all go through stuff. And when I show up at work, I'm here to support someone else. When I show up here, I'm here to support you. But my thing, especially in the last 10 years, is really try to even the playing field and not be about me, the therapist, and you, the person who's coming for help. It's like, no, we're both moms. We're, we both have children. Um, <clears throat> right now, I'm using my expertise to help you. And so that's what I'm doing here. That's what I bring to um, this table that we're sitting at, metaphorically. So my whole thing is about creating parenting gold. And the idea of creating parenting gold and boosting connection with your children is twofold. One is on the parent side. One is on what you need internally. You need to do internally to create that positive parenting mindset. And what you need to do when you interact with your children to be a playful parent, number one, and to play. And when we talk about non-tech, the playing the non-tech way, we're really talking about the idea of really fixing what's going on in the world today. As parents are feeling like they're losing control over the children, they have the iPhones, they have the iPads, they have the tablets, they have the computer, they've got Netflix, they've got you kids YouTube, they've got the, the chats, children are on Instagram, um, they're on a variety of different devices and places on social media. And as much as we can, we need to support our children in being off the devices and in real life. And real life means we communicate at a heart level, at a soul level. We do the things we need to do for the regular day living, and then we encourage our kids to play outside, to be in the kitchen, to take up hobbies and interests, not just things that are um, technological. That's like being in touch with people through the internet. Because that's not, you know, there's so many studies that are showing that this is not conducive to healthy living. And the children are our future. And this is our gift to them, the idea of connection. Not just in do this, do that, or don't do this and don't do that, but actually connecting. And that's that's what my course is all about. Okay, so uh, a couple of questions came up this week that I always pick a couple of questions that I feel can be generalized to all parents, all moms. And, you know, even if it's a question that you haven't thought about, but maybe it's like simmering in your mind, if you have a question, you can put it in the comments and I'm happy to answer it um, here on Wednesdays from 11 to 11.30 if the tech gods allow. <laughs> and um, I'm here to answer your questions. So um, you can also, if you're watching this as a replay, you can pre-submit a question and I will see it. Sorry about that, I'm holding the phone. And I am happy to answer it in our next live or sometimes I'll just do a video about it and post it because uh, some of the questions are, you know, they're so universal and parents are asking for help. So this is my little way of giving back. All right. So you can pop those questions in the chat if you like. And I will um, start with a question that came through, which was very interesting because our discussion last week was a lot about boundaries and building social skills with children 
And as parents, we have the ability not to teach social skills as a curriculum, but like actually teach social skills in our interactions with our children, like teach them by example, teach them by our interactions. So a mom wrote in um, a question saying that, how many games am I supposed to play a day with my child? Uh, one game, seven games, 10 games, and like, do I have to play games every single day? Um, that was one question and I, I thought, yeah, I mean, I guess if I was taking a course, I would also want to get like a real, like, just tell me what I need to do. I'm an overwhelmed mom. I don't know what to do. Just tell me exactly what I need to do. So I figured that that was a universal question. So I'm here to answer that. Play by definition is something you want to do as in being playful. Hello. How are you? Cutie pie. Compliment kids. Sing a little tune, have a dance in your step, put on some music. Don't just be a manager of a mom or what I call an EMS dispatcher or a military commander. Be a mom. You know, the good old fashioned mom. Like, even if you can't do it all the time, when you're looking at your kids, try to see if you can be playful because that's the first important thing. The idea of play. Not every mom likes to get down on the floor and play with her kids. Not every mom likes board games. The games I recommend don't require tech, don't require toys, don't require anything. They're all about connection. So um, this is like I do a game with my grandson who's two and a half. We call it the yes and no game. So, you know, two and a half, that's the terrible twos and he qualifies royally. And so as he's going, no, 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 I sing. I tell him, let's do the yes and no game. And he knows it already. So he'll, he'll come to me, he'll say, Bobby. He calls me Bobby, grandma, and in Yiddish. And he says, no, 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 no. And I go, yes, 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 mayor. And he goes, no. And I go, yes. And he goes, no. And I say, no. And we go back and forth and he can never know if I'm gonna say a no or a yes. And eventually he starts laughing because he starts saying yes and I start saying no. And we sing yes and no and a tantrum can be easily diffused. And he loves it. He'll call me up on the phone. His mother has to tell him, call Bobby, I want to play a game. And so he loves that interaction. As a matter of fact, he has now taken to calling and saying, Bobby, stop resting. I had a virus that really just made me tired. So I've been resting a lot. Uh, stop resting. Come pick me up. Take me to the store. Buy me snackies and cookies and that yogurt with the, you know, all that sugar and the M&Ms on top that I never bought my kids, right? Um, so he knows that I am the playful grandmother. And um, my daughter has learned from me, even though she's my youngest, and so she never really saw me interacting with children younger than her. Well, when we had nieces or nephews, but she took in that watching me, you know, and she is a very playful mother and a connected mother. Playful mothers make connected mothers. So for the moms who ask, well, how often should I play? How many games should I play? I want you to start by picking one time of the day because when we try to conquer the world, we land up doing nothing, right? It just, it doesn't stick. And that's what parents say. How can I know if I take your course that this is going to stick, that I am going to be okay, that I will be that mother that I really want to be? So start with one time. For many parents, it's like uh, they pick bedtime because that's a time when Nerves get frayed easily, so they try to take on that playful mindset and playing a game before they do bedtime. So if it's a board game, a board game, yes. If it's just sitting with your kids on the floor and playing with magnetiles, those are the rage apparently, um, that's great. If it's just, you know, putting the toys in the bathtub and making up imaginary stories, that's fabulous too, but you want to be playful.
in your interactions when you see because what happens is is that strangely enough as you become more playful misbehavior tends to decrease so when you see like you've cemented it it's part of your mindset that you are being playful that you're doing the um special games the special time with your children great you can pick breakfast you can pick when the kids come home from school you can pick a weekend so you pick zones i, I tend to call them moments of interaction points of contact throughout the day and you shift one by one okay another question that came in was um how do i teach my child boundaries through play like you know usually i i just tell my kid what to do and they have to listen and they don't listen and we get into this whole tussle and and it just doesn't work so how do i teach my kids boundaries now who can't relate to this i mean this is the the most amazing question of all time because our kids will challenge us this is what kids do it doesn't mean they're bad kids it's just the nature of what children do right so what we want to do is really just um there are certain ways to play games and be playful which teach a children which teach our children boundaries naturally one of the things that i love to do i'm inspired by um, one of the play therapy modalities talk called theraplay. So, um, and that uses a real game approach, a family approach, and it really resonates with me. Um, and I've seen such amazing things come through when parents and kids play together. So what they suggest is using the idea of one, two, three, or ready, set, go. And you can include that, like, in playing games, you can also use your eye contact. So look at my face, see what mommy is saying, wait for that one, two, three. And then you can say, when we say one, two, three, we play the game. And then that translates during the day when we need our kids to do something. We say, okay, it's our one, two, three, and a go. This is when we're getting on pajamas. This is when we're going to dash to the kitchen table and you're going to get your seat. This is when we're going to hop to the bathtub doing little bunny, uh, you know, that bunny hop song. And when I think back to my childhood, so many of the little ditties that we sang when we played outside for hours and hours and hours on end, who can relate to this? Um, you know, little Sally Saucer, Johnny May Across Your Golden River, um, Miss Mary, Mac, 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 all of them had rhythm and there was a beginning and a middle and an end. So in play, that's the beginning of boundaries is that you can really help the mind um, create this understanding of a beginning and a middle and an end. Now, if you have to talk to your kids about boundaries because there's no other way around it, I many people say go to the biggest problem and let's have that big talk. In my experience, both with my children, um, an aunt to dozens of nieces and nephews, we have a big family, and in my practice now for 20 years, I can tell you that the big talk never really works out that well. So I would say to start with a tiny boundary infraction, a tiny little thing, and you will know what it is for your child. And... Um, Create a shift and a plan like, okay, when mommy says it's time to come in, that could be a little one, that could be a huge one. Most of the times that's huge. But let's say it could be when mommy says, I want you to, um, we need to go to the bathroom. So um, when mommy says, how would, how would we work it out? Like, what would you like to do? Would you like to jump to the bathroom? Would you like to hop? Would you like to skip? Or if it's a kid who always cries with, um, you know, their snack in the morning for school. So you can have a discussion for a tiny little thing. And I, I hesitate to say what the tiny little thing is because what's tiny for one person can be like a huge issue for another person. So I would say go with the baseline and then... Um, Go from there. Okay. 
So I think we have time for one more question. And um, yeah, Denise, if you have any questions, that's great. I'm happy uh, to answer any of them. Okay, just to hang out and participate just as fine. Um, and anybody, if you're watching this live, say hi. If you watch this as a replay, please do the hashtag replay and um, comment if you can as you're listening to the questions. Does this relate to you? Does this not relate to you? Okay, so another question came through this week, which I thought was amazing. What if your kids want to play and play and play and they get upset if you stop playing with them? Gosh, I hadn't thought of that one. It took me right back to when my kids were younger. Like, don't stop playing with us. It's not fair. You play all day in your office and you need to play with us. And I was like, oh, I just can't anymore. This is like, it's been a long day, right? And sometimes my husband could take over, but other times it was like, okay, Kelly, you got to step it up and play. <laughs> and because that's what it's all about. So what do we do when kids don't want to stop playing? So I have a couple of ideas. One is, um, one thing I found is that children don't like when you say, I have 10 minutes to play, I'm giving you 10 minutes, and then we'll play tomorrow for 10 minutes. Like 10 minutes, there's 24 hours in a day, mom, you know? And we're not only talking about little ones, because play is for kids 10 and younger, 11 and younger, 12 and under, as long as they're willing to play, keep playing. I have plenty of kids on parents on my telecourse um, that have in the Orthodox Jewish community, people tend to have large families. And so people will say, you know, I have an 11 year old, I have a 15 year old, I have a 17 year old, I have a two year old. And um, the kids love to play. The 11 year olds love to play. And they're watching the parents play with the little ones. They're like, I want to play. I want to turn. So sometimes kids have a need to have that moment of connection playfully, right? Even if on the outside, they're like, rah, rah. Mm -hmm. They're being all mature and slightly defiant. As they get into adolescence, there's still that little kid inside that needs the connection. So let's honor that with them. Okay, so my recommendation is to say, I would love to play a few games with you. Now, if we're playing a board game, say I'd love to play two board games, two rounds. And then tomorrow, I would love to because I love to play with you. So you flip it around and you make it about you and you say that you're looking forward. Now, what does that do to a child that makes them feel so like yummy and cozy inside their hearts that mommy is looking forward to playing with me? Wow, right? And if you're playing a couple of these little yes and no games or Johnny May Across You Golden River, that kind of thing, then you would do four or five games. So you would say, I want to play a few games with you. And then tomorrow, I can't wait to play again with you. Now, if a child keeps wanting to play, 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 that is a message for you that your child needs something from you. So I want you to really think, what does your child need? What are they trying to say? And if they're trying to say something, let's try to fill that emotional need. It's always an emotional need that's trying to be filled out. And then you could do what I say, know those moments to fill up the parenting goal. Two minutes here, five minutes there, 10 minutes anywhere. Well, anyway, with our kids, let's play with them. Let's be playful. Let's give them what they need to grow up to be healthy, happy kids, resilient kids. And that is my motto. Happy kids, happy families. Happy kids, happy moms, happy families. Um, you can learn more about my work, um, you know, because this is going to be on my business page as well. We're going to put it there. I have a Facebook group, Parenting with Gelly. I also have um, a new website, parentingwithgelly.com. I have some programs actually that you can do self-guided because it's a new website. I have really discounted some of these programs to just see, again, get those first early testimonials, get work out the different pieces as we launch. And, and the parenting course, as I said, if you um, just joined in in the middle, I am doing a pre-launch and my pre-launch for Mother's Day 
it is a we're still going on the week of mother's day here um first person to sign up 197 that's taken and then uh the two next people that sign up 297 the next two people that sign up 397 and then for the month of may it'll be 497 so i am excited to um get my first group together online and as we launch and i will keep you guys posted so um this is this is a calling and uh for those of you who are just watching i'd like to share with you this calling of getting online and helping parents outside of my office really came through as a result of my near-death experience with corona what kept me going and i was semi-conscious for a while you know it was right in the beginning nobody knew what to do and i kept thinking if i survive i'm gonna create a parenting course that i have always wanted to do that I know parents need because I see them in my office. You know, it'll actually save them money if, you know, they can listen on their own time and make the changes that they need. And even if you need my help, it could just be, you know, a little bit of time. It doesn't have to be a massive, massive, uh, you know, expenditure of time and money and pulling kids out of school and turning your lives upside down to get your kids help because so many problems can be resolved with the love of a parent and the, as a parent learns skills to teach the child connection, to, um, I mean, to reach a child by connection, teach them all the social skills they need for life in their home, give them the nurture they need, build their self-confidence, because they are practical ways. And my, my biggest, I would say, asset as a therapist is being practical, taking huge concepts and making it seem like it's very simple and very doable. And that's the feedback I'm getting as well. So change is doable. We don't have to be an overwhelm as parents. We can create the happy, healthy families that we want. We can raise resilient children in a world that's upside down. No matter what's going on, you are the first line of defense uh, for your children as a mom and you can do it. We all need support. I needed support, uh, you know, while raising my kids, and there's no shame in that. So if there was my parenting course back then, I would have taken it. So <laughs> that's that about me. Well, anyway, um, if you'd like to connect with me, um, schedule a 15-minute free parenting consult. I'm here. If you'd like to take advantage of our Mother's Day offer, um, please write that in the comments below. Um, just write I don't know, right? Um, let's see, let's make this fun, right? Connection, and I will reach out to you via messenger. Let's do this. Let's build a world together of happy, healthy, well-adjusted children that can walk us in into the next generation as moms. Let's do our jobs. Let's, it's easy, it's simple when you learn the tools. So. Again, if you've got any questions, please, you can put them in the comments below. You can message me. I am here to support you guys. All right. Here's to a great day and happy parenting. Take care.